integration using T formula. All right, so before we jump into integration with T formula, let's just have a bit of a recap on T, T formula. So remember, if we have a right angle triangle with an angle of X and adjacent side 1 minus T squared and opposite 2T, that'll give us a hypotenuse of 1 plus T squared. We get the following results that if T is equal to, so all of this T has to be equal to tan of X over 2, we'll get sine x equaling 2t over 1 plus t squared, cos x equaling 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared, and tan x equaling 2t over 1 minus t squared. Now, if we're going to use T formula for integration, we're using it as a substitution. And in order to use it as a substitution, we're also going to need to make note, if we have, if we have T equaling tan of X over two, we could say that X over two equals the inverse tan of T. Multiplying both sides by 2 gives us x equals 2 multiplied by the inverse tan of t. Then we're going to differentiate this to get dx dt as now the derivative of inverse tan of t is just going to, well, the, we get the factor of 2 and we're just going to get 1 plus t squared. So in the denominator. And we're going to use we're going to use this result to help us with our integration uh, using T formula. And the best way to do this is with an example. So we're going to look at the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of 4 over 3 plus 5 cos x dx and as you can see this is this is a bit of a mess this fraction we don't have any derivatives of the denominator in the numerator and nothing really stands out nothing really stands out that we can do here to make it easier but we're going to give a t formula a go with this one now to use T formula here, the first thing you have to do is you have to let T equal uh, tan x over 2. So we have, so T automatically has to equal tan x over 2. And if that's the case, we could replace cos x with 1 minus T squared over 1 plus T squared. And dx, we can use this result here. Uh, to sub in to sub in something so one other thing we have to do is we have to we have to change our limits as well because these are our limits when we're dealing with x but if we're going to change everything in terms of t we're going to have to change those limits so let's do that first so we're going to have the integral now if x equals zero we're changing everything in terms of t, so we're just going to have tan of 0 over 2, which is just going to be 0. Now, if x equals pi on 2, we're going to get a pi on 2 all over 2, which is pi on 4, and tan pi on 4 is just going to be 1, so that upper limit gets changed to a 1. Now, let's go ahead and do some sub subbing in. So we're going to get 4 over 3 plus... 5 times cos x, so we're going to use 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared instead of cos x. And dx, we're going to write as 2dt over 1 plus t squared, so using this, this result here. And 
this probably just looks like more of a mess, but let's see what happens when we, we tidy all of this up. So we're going to get integral from 0 to 1. Let's go one step at a time. So we're going to have 4 over 3 plus 5 outside of 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared times 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to say this is the integral from 0 to 1. Well, the 4 times 2 is 8 over. We'll rewrite the 3 as 3 outside of 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared trying to get a common denominator, plus 5 outside of 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And all of this is going to be multiplied by our 1 plus t squared in the denominator over here. So what's going to happen is that that 1 plus t squared is going to cancel with all of those. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of 8 over, let's expand this out. Well we've got 3 times 1 plus 5 times 1 which is just going to be 8. We're going to have 3 times t squared which is 3t squared plus 5 times minus t squared so we're going to have minus 5t squared so 3t squared minus 5t squared is minus 2t squared dt. Should add dt. Now we can take out a factor of 2. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 over 4 minus t squared dt. So we've turned this ugly integral into this a more manageable integral. If this was positive down here, we'd be able to jump straight into doing an inverse tan, but it's negative, so that's not the case. So what we're going to have to do here is uh, factorize this as a difference of two squares and do some partial fractions. So we might go slice this. Right, what we had, we had the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 over 4 minus t squared dt is what we had. And then, so let's do the factorize with the difference of two squares. So we're going to get 2 minus t and 2 plus t dt. And Let's just go and let's let's work out the partial. Let's use partial fractions to split up this fraction. So we're going to get four over two minus t times two plus t. And we want to split it up into its factors. So we want to work out what the numerator will be for the two minus t term, and what will the numerator be for the two plus t term. So we'll times both sides by this denominator here. So that's just going to give us 4 on the left. It'll leave us with a outside of 2 plus t. It'll leave us with b outside of 2 minus t. We're going to let t equal to 2 and see what happens. So if we let t equal to 2, this all becomes 0. This becomes 4a. So we just get 4 equals 4a. So a must equal 1. What happens if t equals minus 2? So if t is equal to minus 2, that all becomes 0. 2 minus minus 2 becomes 4. So we just get 4 equals 4b. So we get 
4 equals 4b, so b also equals 1. So now we know that the whole fraction can be written as 1 over 2 minus t plus 1 over 2 plus t. So let's go and sort that out. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 2 minus t plus 1 over 2 plus t dt. So these integrals are much easier to manage. So the integral of so we can integrate these separately because they're being added together. We might do the integral of this one first because the derivative of the denominator is in the numerator. The derivative of 2 plus t is just 1 and that's in the numerator. So we're just going to get the natural log of the absolute value of 2 plus t. And then this one, the derivative of this is actually minus 1. So we put the minus 1 up here and out the front. So we just end up with minus the natural log of 2 minus t. And that's all between the bounds of 0 and 1. And all we have to do is just go ahead and sub in 1 and 0. So we get the natural log of the absolute value of 2 plus 1, which is 3, minus the natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus 1, which is 1, minus the natural log of the absolute value of 2 plus 0, which is 2, minus the natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus 0, which is also 2, then the natural log of 2 minus log 2 is all just going to be 0, so that's all 0. Then log of 1 is also 0, so all we're left with for the final answer is in the absolute value of 3 is just 3, so we get the final answer as ln3. Thank you.